Hello, welcome back to another episode of this tutorial, Experian SDK3 tutorial. This is fourth episode of this tutorial. Uh, by now, we discussed about the SDK definition. We built our very own first plugin in Experian and Visual Studio 2017. And then we talked about data reps, commands, and we also created our own first uh, custom data ref in the last episode. In this episode, we are going to have our first real project. We are uh, somehow this this lecture is not a pure tutorial. I'm not uh, going to explain everything in detail because I expect you that you have watched the last episode. So if you haven't watched the last episode, I recommend you pause this video, go back to the last uh, three tutorials, watch them, and come back here because I'm not going to discuss everything in detail. I'm just going to get everything we learned by now and mix it together, combine it, and just create a real project. This project is uh, uh, implementing a new feature inside Explain. This feature can be anything. I just uh, selected one for an example. You can do everything. After this uh, tutorial, you may have many new ideas to implement it in Explain. Okay. <clears throat> the topic is calculating real elevator stick force. For those of you that uh, are, have some piloting background or aerospace engineering backgrounds, you know that uh, <clears throat> you know the control surfaces. You know that they are connected to the stick. I'm talking about the general aviation airplanes, such as Cessna, Jet Stream, and so on. The control surfaces are connected to the pilot stick with the with cables, some pulleys, and uh, but in the simulator you don't uh, feel any force inside your uh, on your stick. You just get your stick, or you can rotate it. There's no force on it. But in real air airplane, there's force on it. So you are uh, actually there are force on the uh, there are aerodynamic force on inside uh, on the control surface. So when you want to, for example. Uh, push the elevator, you should uh, contract with that force on, on the control surface. Uh, Xplane has a feature in Plane Maker that can uh, <clears throat> somehow estimate the stick force and just calculate it for you. So you can do anything with that later on. You can have, you can create some stick, uh, some stick with force feedback. Yeah, there are also some commercial force feedback sticks in, uh, in Amazon and eBay. You can search for them, but they are really expensive. In this tutorial, we are just going to calculate that value without using explain feature, without using plane maker, because plane maker has some uh, estimation by itself. We are going to use some real flight test data for this uh, for this uh, demonstration. What we are going to do is, uh, we have these values. As you can see on the left, we have some <coughs> tables and some columns, elevator angle, elevator link force, indicated airspeed, and so on. Uh, we are just going to talk about the first one, first table. Uh, so, you see, based on the elevator angle and the, and the speed, you get some uh, different elevator link force. What, what is link force? Link force is different from the force you are acting on the stick. Link force is the force that is acting on the elevator, from the cables and pulleys act, acts on the elevator. So how, do, uh, how we have calculated it? It's just some load cells. I, uh, implementing some load cell on the link and we can calculate the force on that. And again, I repeat, these values are real board. These are not calculated or simulated. These are real flight based on flight test labs in Cranfield University. Uh, <clears throat> so we have, uh, so you can see the elevator link force is a function of elevator angle and indicated airspeed. Better to say if you are aerospace engineer, better to say it's as a, it's a function of dynamic pressure. But because we are uh, flying on the same altitude, about 6,000 feet. So uh, the dynamic pressure is only uh, a function of indicated airspeed. And simply say it's speed. Okay, after calculating the elevator link force, we have a function here that is identical for each airplane. So each airplane has its own function. 
some air, some airplanes such as commercial airplanes with fly by wire systems actually they are totally different there is no force on the stick it's just like simulator we are talking about uh, some general aviation aircraft and i forgot to mention that this airplane is a bae data stream uh, 32 that we are using in this uh, simulation but the data is for very older version of data stream which is handy page data stream one uh, i'm not going through the detail, but we have uh, implemented some changes to the BAE JetStream 32 from J. Roland. Uh, we have changed the characteristic of that uh, airplane, changed the weight, power, and some uh, aerodynamic properties to make it similar to the Handley Page JetStream one. These are not important, I'm just telling that if you are curious. So we have an airplane, we have some flight tests avail flying tests available, and we have a function, a transfer function. So what is our purpose? What is our goal? We want to <coughs> uh, create a plugin inside each plane. That plugin uh, in each flight loop, or maybe each second, gets the value of the indicated airspeed and elevator angle. And using these tables we have here, calculates the elevator link force based on these values. After that, we calculate the stick force and we show it to the, <coughs> and we register it in data of editor so user can see that and plug that. Later on, if we wanted to build a, a, a stick force, stick force feedback system, we can use these values. Okay. As you can see, we know, uh, you know everything about this, we talked about all these uh, topics in the last episode, but there's something new, and that is how we use this value. And for that, I'm, uh, I'm using MATLAB and curve fitting tools. So, the first step, I want to input these values inside MATLAB. I hope you know the basic, uh, you know the basics of MATLAB, but if not, don't worry, we are talking about explain. MATLAB is not important here, all we are going... We are, MATLAB on, uh, we are using MATLAB only to get the function, only to get the curve that uh, fits this value together. Okay, let's go to MATLAB. What we are going to do in MATLAB, I have already imported those values, imported those tables here. You can see the V, which is indicated ASP, 12, there are 12 uh, values here, F, uh, DE delta elevator and elevator uh, link force which is this one you can see these are exactly these values I use, I use these two tables these are uh, these are measured in this in the same indicated airspeed uh, and this one with diff, uh, this one with different indicated airspeed and almost the same elevator but this one with the same indicated airspeed and different elevator angles so using both this table you can we can interpolate between this value and calculate the elevator link force in each uh, elevator angle and indicated errors so what we are going to do uh, next is using the apps in the matlab and curve fitting tools and uh, i should mention that this method is not theoretically correct it is not Guaranteed. It's just an estimation. You know, you'll see what's happening here. It's just an estimation. Okay, the piece is so heavy. I have MATLAB, Explain, PowerPoint, Visual Studio, everything here. So it's very heavy. <clears throat> okay, this is care for the tools. I'm not going to go to through the details. Just using that. What is the name? I put, for example, Link Force versus DE and indicated errors. That's a simple name. So what uh, we have three dimensions here. Remember the table? What are the inputs and what are the outputs? Indicated error speed and elevator angle are the input and the output is elevator link force. So we are going to fit a surface. If I want to tell uh, tell you the mathematical explanation it is we are fitting a surface to these inputs so what's happening here we define the x as for example indicated airspeed and y as delta elevator and z which is our output will be f 
Okay, so MATLAB will show a preview here for us. Wait a second. Okay, this is the surface. Uh, okay. I prefer to have it like this. This is, I think, better. Yes. It really doesn't matter if you select X or Y different inputs. Okay, now you should select the method of the surface fitting. I will select polynomial. And just to mention that uh, in the theoretical and the calculation of aerospace, we know that the relationship between, uh, for example, FE and the delta elevator is almost linear. So we expect that. Uh, expect that the linear, which is polynomial with the degree 1, acts great, which is good. You can see these points are the real value and this is the surface. You can see it's almost great and the R, R square is 0.99, which is great. So it shows that our flight test was uh, very great. But to make it a little realistic and add some, the, some assumption, remove some assumption inside our theoretical, I'm going to use degree 2. You can see it's a little curvature here, and I want to have this uh, uh, curvature and some errors inside. These are some errors that are not being calculated in theoretical equations, so I want those to be simulated inside this plane. So I'm using degrees 2 uh, as a function of square x and square y. And you can see the r square is very good, 0.999. Uh, this value shows how much your data are fitted inside this surface. The closest this value will be to 1 is the best. Okay. So, what is the output? What do we need from this at the end? We, we don't need all of this. We only need this equation, which is, you can see, f of x and y, this equation. And these coefficients are reported here. So, this function means that if you have x and y, which is delta elevator and indicated airspeed based on this equation you can find f which is fe which is elevator link force so that we are done with matlab all we wanted but was this equation now we go back to uh, explain and visual study okay let's go to visual study this is exactly the last uh, file that I posted for you inside YouTube in the description of the last episode. I will put a link for this one and also the finished version of it inside this uh, inside the description of the post as well. You can see if you remember in the last episode we created a new data ref which has sensor temp reference and we added noise inside our ideal temperature and we registered that the let you okay no, I'm not going to talk about these things anymore just going to the uh, code directly this one remained the same because we still want to add the data ref to our uh, explain data ref editor temperature noise amplitude I'm going to change it to noise amplitude because I want to have the uh, noise as well in this example so we come to this. I told you that we need to define XPLM data ref for each data ref we are using, regardless of if it is a custom data ref or uh, even uh, the data refs that are built inside XPLM. So what data ref we are going to use? First one is elevator angle. And I'm going to put a ref to know that this is the key to the data ref. This is not the value. And what else do we need? IAS, indicated error speed. But I'm going to use calibrated error speed or, okay, IAS, doesn't matter. IAS, ref, and one more data ref, two more data ref, sorry. What's happening? Oh no. <laughs> I think I better close the MATLAB so. I'm going to uh, get a screenshot of this page and close the MATLAB. Okay. No. And 
this clothes my flat. Okay, I think we did it better. Right. Let's go back to Visual Studio. And we need uh, two more data apps. Uh, what do you guess? The first one is elevator link force. I call it link force. And uh, let's give it the name of elev as well. Because we have the same concept for rather aileron and so on. And we need another one which is stick. Elev stick link. A stick force. Uh, this is these two are custom data ref. This one is uh, calculated by the equation we got from MATLAB, and this one is calculated based on the equation defined next, uh, in the PowerPoint slide. Okay, let's uh, next next step is to create the values. All of these will be floats, so we don't uh, we don't bother ourselves changing the data. Ref. We change this one to eleven angle by the S. Val. Okay, so no need to have val here. Lev link force. Oh, I forgot to put the ref here and here. And the last one, lev stitch. So uh, everything will be the same here for the registering data of in DRE. We just go line by line to see what we should change. Then uh, you remember we need a data accessor, a getter, and setter for each day, each custom data. So we had one for sensor value, but uh, we have we are going to change this. Get sensor bar because uh, we change it to get LF anchor. You can change its name. I'm just using the convention here and set yeah. I haven't done this code before this is the first time I've changing this value so uh, bear with me if there was any error in here maybe there are some errors and I find it out when I build it okay set LF angle and everything the same I need one more Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> we don't need to create a getter and setter for the inbuilt uh, data. Ref. We only need to create the getter and setter for the custom data, ref, which is LF link force and LF stick force. So this is LF in angle force and LF set LF angle force. Sorry for this. And I'm going to have a copy of this Get here. And this time, uh, I'm going to <laughs> change it to link force, link force, and stick force. It doesn't matter if you don't know the aerospace concepts behind it. Just I told you the link force is different from stick force. It doesn't matter. Just look at it. If you are a computer engineer, if you are a programmer, and it's all you care is the coding. Don't think about this, just think it as A, B, C, and so on. But there are some aerospace concepts behind it. The randomizer function will be the same. We can change the plugin name, for example, elevator link and stitch force. Calculator. Calculator. Force, force, and the description. We are going to have a LF stick for this is uh, the description for us to remember the name LF stick force and. Link force uh, in Newton. The, the dimension will be the Newton. 
Okay, now we want to create the data ref. Instead of sensor time preference, we are going to have this one. Uh, LF link force. And I'm going to change the name here. I'm a big fan of copying and pasting. I'm uh, changing this value, get These are the data accessor, which is getter and setter. I've talked about all these concepts in the last uh, episode, so you can go back and review them if you don't remember. And why there is an error here? Value well, cannot be abstract. Aha, uh -huh. okay, this is the ref. Uh, you know, I, I was using the value, I should use the reference, I should use the key to the uh, data. data. So we need another one of these because we have two custom data ref. This one is the, instead of link, which is, which is tick. And also this one. And this. Stick. Uh, that's done. I think that is, nothing is wrong right here. The next step. Next step, finding and initializing our data types. So, we are going to change this one to link force reference. And the name was, let me type this one for you. Not just copying and pasting. Uh, LF link course. Okay. Now the next one. LF sorry. Stick force. Stick force. Um, using this and instead of link we could stitch okay before uh, going to the next step uh, we are going to have initialized the two other data ref which are the inbuilt uh, data refs of the explained itself so we declared the values here 11 angular and IAS ref we put this one here and again xplm find data ref and we put the name I didn't do anything for this episode because I wanted to do everything with you so you can be with me so you remember what was, uh, what was the method to find uh, uh, a data ref for a value for example we want the elevator angle and the IAS sorry IAS ref so I told you you can use the Google to find the data ref name or you can use the data ref editor I told you this website sim navigation you can Google and find it you can search for the for example elevator and then search for it you can see elevator trim, elevator this one the deflection of elevator on the wing uh, the positive is trading edge down I think it should be this one elevator. but the elevator is not on the wing <laughs> explain <laughs> elevator is on the horizontal stabilizer I think this one is correct but we can test it I have explained here. Okay. Okay, I'm not going to use anything here. Uh, okay. <laughs> I will restart you. And uh, we go to data of editor and we search for the elevate. Yes, elevator 1 degree, elevator 2 degree, these are 0, these are the elevator angles. 
So we are going to use this value. So I'm going to close explain. Come back here. I'm copy the name of this one, elevator one. Elevator one and elevator two basically means, I think it means that because the horizontal surface has two sections in some airplanes, it's not only a surface, so it's cut from here and it can be, it can have different values. For example, in flat prone airplanes, uh, they can act like instead of this, they can use this and this. Okay. Come back to Visual Studio, copy the data ref name here. Okay, sorry. And put it here. The next one, IAS. In explain indicated airspeed is basically the calibrated airspeed. It doesn't differ at all. So you can use airspeed. You can search airspeed. Calibrated airspeed and indicated airspeed inside explain are the same. Uh, that autopilot. Gauges, we can use the gauge value. Uh, gauges, indicator, airspeed, acceleration, not uh, airspeed, not pilot. Indicated, airspeed, and not pilot. This is the one we are looking for. This is the value of the airspeed that is the pilot is seeing. So I'm going to have copy this here. And remember the dimensions, airspeed is knots and elevator is degrees. This is exactly the same thing that we had here. The speed is based on knot, nautical miles, and elevator is degrees. And the lane for is based on Newton. You can see the values here. Okay. The first step is to initialize two custom uh, link forces and elevator link force. We are going to initialize them. So... Uh, ideal. Let's have a copy here. I want to differentiate them with the last code. I'm going to uh, put link force. Link elev link force equals xplm get data float elev link. Why there is no recommendation? It's scary when you don't see the recommendations. Okay. So now we have the value. Um, LF. Stick force and LF. Sorry. Stick force reference. Should okay yes I believe I hope so so there are two other data types that uh, we want to have the values which is the one one of them is IAS and elevator angle let's have a copy elev angle elev angle reference IAS indicated error speed and IAS ref that's done. Next, we are going to set the uh, values, initialize those two custom values because they don't have value. Basically, they should have zero inside them, but for extra precaution, we are going to have set them to zero. So I am going to have a copy of this, but instead of sensor temp reference, I'm going to have LF link. Force reference and LF. remember we are we are not using the value we are using the reference or the key to the uh, data ref. stick force reference and we are going to put zero on that doesn't matter this is the initialization the first moment next time XPLM register flights to callback I told you about the call uh, callbacks and how they are going to use a hard they are going to work in this tutorial. We are going to use uh, the same as the last one. We are going to use flight loop callback. Uh, these are the same. Oh, for the uh, registering the data ref inside the data ref editor, we are going to register both our custom data ref inside the uh, data ref editor. Because if we don't do that, we, do, uh, we can't see the value. They exist. Our two new custom data ref exists. Or exist, but we don't have access to them. We can't see them through the register data of editor. Okay, 
we I'm going to change the names here this one and for this one stick force I hope I haven't done anything wrong yet. That's good because we don't. I don't see any red lines until here. We have worked until here, and we don't see any red lines here, which is great. I hope so. Okay, next step. Uh, that explain stop. Sorry. Uh, explain under this step. This happens uh, when the plugin stops. We should define what what happens when the explain stops. When this plugin stops. So what we want to do is we disable unregister our data refs and we unregister on flight loop callback. So you have another copy of this. Elev link reference. Elev stick force reference. And the data ref editor, the same name. One, uh -huh. We are going to create uh, the getter and setter. We are going to declare them, we define them exactly. So we had get sensor bar, which will become get stitch. I forgot the name here. Uh, get elev link force. Get elev link force. Set elev link force. And uh, put the values here. Uh, elev elevator link force. And for this one, again, elevator link force. We are going to have a copy of this, this one for stick force. You see, all of this works. When you find the concept, you understand the concept behind the work, everything just become uh, a simple copying and pasting. But you should understand what is happening. You should understand the getter setters, what is happening behind the scene. When you just learn the concepts, everything then becomes very, very easy, just copying and pasting. Set elevator force, uh, stick force, and this one also, stick force, and this one, stick force. I think it is done and there is no red line here. It's very inspiring. Okay, the last, almost last step, which is calculating the values. This is our uh, callback. This, hap this code runs after each uh, call callback loop. Uh, so, first we want to get the values of our data floats. Okay, we are going to set 11 link force uh, remember if you have the concept of programming this elev link force is different from the elev link force that we keep declare from other places so you know the concept of the vari uh, the variables scope you know that this one is on only valid inside this scope so there will be no uh, overriding there is no uh, conflict between the variables this one is actually I'm get data elev data link force reference. I'm going to have a copy of this. Please please select this one for a stick. And also you. Okay, then we are going to have floats. Uh -huh. And we are going to have the value of the IAS and Elevator angle as well here. I'm doing this code. I'm not doing this optimized. This is not optimized code. You see, there are lots of declaration. Again, declaring using the value. You know, you can skip it and don't do it like this. I'm just doing this for the sake of tutorial. But I'm going to just describe everything to you uh, so you understand what I'm exactly uh, doing here. Uh, okay. Now IAS ref and LF angle LF 
angle ref okay this part is the fun part this part is that we are using the flight test data and uh, the value from the <coughs> values we calculated in MATLAB okay what we are going to do is we declare the new variable here which is float for example link this one is the real link force let's let's call it temp I told you this is not very optimized way of coding elev stick force and uh, first we should calculate the elev link force so what we are going to do here we are going to add this function here but the x and y's are different you can see the x and y's are uh, x is delta elevator angle and v is indicated there as I'm going to pause the value uh, pause the video and in, just uh, write this function in here and also write this function here so you don't need to wait and see I'm typing and then I resume the video Okay, I'm back. I have typed the equation here that for the elevator link force and elevator is equal. The link force is uh, minus 1048 minus 112.4 times uh, multiplied by elevator angle and so on. You can see the term of the elevator angle with the degree 1, the elevator angle with degree 2. Uh, you can see the uh, nonlinear part which is uh, the combination the multiple uh, multiplication between elevator angle and indicated error speed and you can see the weight of that is not so much and also the indicated error speed term 2 which is also small because the curvature is very small uh, just to remember this equation is exactly this this is the surface equation for the F elevator as a function of V and delta elevator I'm just going to rem uh, tell you once more. Remember, this method is not exactly correct. This method is just an estimation inside this flight envelope, inside in this specific flight. For example, these tests are, uh, are gathered at for the jet stream handling page in a specific weather, in a specific day, in a specific temperature, and a specific altitude. It's very important. And also the CG position. The CG is very important. Also the purpose of this test is for the uh, finding the effect, effect of uh, center of gravity on the elevator link force and after that we can use it to uh, find a neutral point and so on. So this equation this uh, estimation, this surface, it's only will only work for this specific flight condition. So if you are going to really add this capability inside Xplane, you should create many of these surfaces. For example, you, you create a surf, uh, you can this surface is for example for 6,000 feet. So you have to uh, add another surface for 7,000 feet. Maybe it will be the same, but a little, for example, up or a little down. Then you calculate it for different CGs. Then you interpolate all of those surfaces, and based on the flight condition, you, you select which surface I should use. So this is just an example. This is just an introduction of uh, implementing this feature for only for this flight condition. Uh, and I'm just doing this for the sake of tutorial. If you are going to add the elevator angle uh, force for your plane, I, I suggest you to use the plane maker uh, force feedback option. That will just uh, that option will do exactly as I told you. It will create some lots of lookup tables, uh, and it knows that by changing the altitude, changing the dynamic pressure and changing the CG, how will it uh, affect the, the force feedback? So I'm just doing it for an example to understand the concepts. I'm not talking about this, the validity of this concept at all. And after finding this value, 
I created a temperature stick force and using this value and this transfer function that you see here. So everything is ready, but uh, re remember this value, this value determines approximately what the period of the code running. So I put it, for example, on one. So I don't want it to be very slow. And the randomizer. Uh, and I want to add a noise to that. Uh, remember the last time how, how we added noise? We added the noise, remember? Um, let me copy it. I want to show you the exact code over there. Okay, no problem. I undo. This was our last uh, code. I'm going to copy it and then come back to the code we had. Okay. This was our code in the last episode. Last episode for adding the noise to temperature. What did we do? You remember we added the value with a randomizer and the amplitude uh, to the value. So I'm going, I'm going to add the noise only to this one because this one is measured, this one is calculated, this one can't have noise, this one can't have no, can have noise. So after this line, I'm going to have hem elev link force equals to put. Uh, I'm going to have it like this plus equals to just like here randomizer. We should put the mean and max value of the range of the one to have for a random value. I'm going to have the minus of noise amplitude multiplied by the value because I want the noise be the function of the value because the higher the value will be, the, the, more, the, no, uh, the more the noise amplitude will be. And the maximum will be noise amplitude, sorry, multiplied by again this one. And only one more thing to discuss, and which is if you are using the power function here for mathematical calculation, you should have add the include for the math library which is include math.h and i think the noise amplitude is so much five percent is so much so i'm going to put it two percent so now i think everything is finished and i hope i haven't done anything wrong uh, believe me i haven't built this yet and i don't know what will happen so until that i'm going to let the explain run before and come back to visualize. Uh, after, uh, before compiling, let me tell you something else. If you have noticed, I'm using Visual Studio 2019 in this episode. It is uh, just recently published and it's a new version. And uh, I just wanted to check, does it work it? Does it have any different? And you see nothing is almost different. Just as a joke, I can say that the difference is just like FIFA 2018 and 2019 PC games. So almost nothing has changed. Just some visual uh, in here, visual uh, shrinkage. They have shrink the menu, so you don't you have more space here. They have added a automatic issue resolver, but it's not helping us here at least. This will recommend you to what you should do when you find the errors and warnings and can do it automatically for you. And just a new welcome screen and everything is the same. So uh, if you want. If you want to buy the enterprise version, so I tell you it doesn't worth to buy it yet. Uh, only if your work has, maybe your work has some need to new version, but ours inside Experience doesn't need Experience to uh, Visual Studio 2019. It's just the same. 
But for, for the free community version, you can go and download the new version from Microsoft website and everything is the same. Everything that we talked in the first episode for configuring Visual Studio 2017 is exactly the same as uh, Visual Studio 2019. Uh, you don't need to change anything. You just open our solution with the new Visual Studio. That's all. Okay, let's go build the projects and we hope we don't find any errors. Building started. If we have any errors, it will be some typo errors. And you, sh you maybe know that by now. Okay, succeeded. At least we don't have any errors before compilation. Maybe, maybe we have some errors in the runtime. Okay, the plugin is ready, the release version is ready. First, I'm going to let the explain run. I'm going to get the value, uh, get the plug build plugin here, the release. And plugins and this one. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to put it as a plugin that is for a specific airplane. I'm, going, I'm not going to put this plugin for all the explain airplanes. I'm going to extra aircraft and BA Jet Stream Test 2 plugins and I'm going to put it here. Okay, that's done. LF4 exercise 4. It should, it should be working now. Okay, I'm, I always use the demo version in the YouTube tutorials. New flight, BAH Stream 32, and again we are going to Mehrabad International Airport inside Iran. It should take a few seconds. And uh, not to forget, I will put the link for the Visual Studio solution for this uh, tutorial inside the video description. And if you have any question or any request for the next videos, you can ask me in the comments. And please subscribe, like, and give me some motivation. <laughs> and as I told you, this is my first experience creating YouTube tutorials. So uh, excuse me if there is any problems in my speaking, some uh, actions here. Um, everything and I have decided to put some uh, created some create some new series of tutorials about uh, the communication of e explained with MATLAB so for those of you that are studying engineering you will wonder how we can connect the explain to MATLAB and Simulink which is a simulator real-time simulator and we get the values of for example speed altitude and so on and we can do some real-time processing on that and get values back uh, this is very useful for engineering students so in the next stage I'm going to talk about the connecting the MATLAB to exponent it's very easy it's very 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 easy it's even easier than coding with SDK there are lots of examples and plugins out there there's NASA explain plugin you can easily connect it to explain and there will be no big deal. I'm just going to show you that how much easy that it would be. And after that, I'm going to talk about the uh, uh, DIY do it your own cockpits. I'm going to connect explain to Arduino boards. So in the next series, I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to connect some encoders, push buttons, switches to the Arduino. So you will have, for example, a knob a physical knob that you can touch and when you rotate it for example the heading or anything any other switches that you want will be moving that is also very simple we, we may use this we can use the SDK we can use MATLAB we can use uh, AVR coding for that but we are going to use Simvin and I'm going to talk about Simvin in the next episodes it's relative very very simple steps Okay, let's go to the explain and see if it's or not. Okay, it's working. And I'm going, uh, I, I, I have already searched for it. Okay, this is zero. And I think this is correct because we are not moving. We should start moving and see that if 
I think that while this value should be changing because we added some noise to that, a level thick force and a blink force. I think there is something wrong here. Yes, there is something definitely wrong. And I think there, will, there is a typo error within the values. Okay, no problem. I pause the video, I find the problem, and come back to you with the video. Okay. Okay, I find a problem at the exact point that I paused the video. We did a very silly mistake. We calculated the values, but we forgot to set those values in, to the uh, actual uh, data. Ref. So it's uh, very simple. Just going to say XPLM set data float data float and we put the name of the data ref which is lf link force and the value which is temp lf link force that was a very silly mistake we had okay lf stick force and also this one why these are uh, why set data? I don't know why they are not red. Okay, let's rebuild the solution. I think I put the values in the wrong order. Yes. Set. We can have it copy from here. XPLM set data. We can put it here. Oh, 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 oops. <laughs> that was a very, very silly mistake. <laughs> Very interesting video. Sorry for the errors here. So uh, we should use the reference for them. <laughs> Very silly mistake. I'm so sorry. Um, that's done. Going to rebuild the solution. Sorry for the errors because, <laughs> as you see, I wanted to this tutorial be live and real time, so you be faced with the errors I'm experience here. Okay, I'm going to delete this if. It, uh, it won't let me, so let me change the airplanes and delete it. Get back to Visual Studio directory. Where is it? to explain aircraft extra aircraft jet stream plugins and copy it here i hope this one is working go to flight configuration jet stream start flight i haven't think that i will cut the my silly mistakes in this video or not, but I think I won't cut them because they will be really helpful for you. See that there are some values here, and these values are not correct as I told you because these values are only for that specific flight condition, for that regime of speed and altitude. So I'm going to put our airplane in, for example, about 7,000 feet and I put the speed of 150 and extract the gears and okay you see we are going okay you can see the reasonable values for elevator link force and elevator stick force I'm trying to level this aircraft okay almost leveling okay okay 
some way power okay this is almost what is the speed okay let me reduce the speed a little Okay, as I told you, this, uh, these two values are almost true for the regime of the, uh, our, flight, our flight envelope, which is about the speed of 150-60 and the altitude of 6,000-7,000, about here, a little more, here. This is the speed that you want. You can see this is... The value is changing based on my elevator angle. And this is it. Okay, that's it. This is the uh, this is it. I am not going to uh, use your time anymore. And these are the values. Uh, by far, you can just compare the values with the values we got from the simulator you can see about the elevator angle of minus 2 we got 300 of link force it's almost correct not exactly because we are not exactly at, at that flight condition okay that's it uh, for this video tell me if you have any question and like the video if you like um, see you in the next series of these episodes that I told you will be about connecting the explain to Visualist uh, to Arduino and MATLAB and Simulink. Thank you. Goodbye.